Hello ladies and gentle folk. Today I'd like to introduce you to a concept known as tautomerism. This is an interesting type of isomerism that we find in some kinds of organic molecules. In this video I will look specifically at keto-enol tautomerism because it's the easiest kind to explain and it's very important in modern chemistry. A good place to start would be, what does keto-enol mean? Well, the keto part refers to a ketone. This is a molecule with a carbonyl group in it, a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. They tend to be very stable molecules that don't react with much in the lab. The enol part of the name comes from alkanol. This type of molecule has both an alkene group and an alcohol group. The alkene group is a carbon-carbon double bond, like this one. And an alcohol group is also called a hydroxyl group. It's an oxygen atom with a hydrogen bonded to it. So what exactly is ketoenol tautomerism? It's a situation where you have a ketone that can turn into an alkanol in solution, or the other way around. It's as if you have one molecule that can shapeshift between two different forms. Shapeshifting? That's ridiculous, you might think. But remember, in chemistry, anything is possible. Let's look at an example. Here I have a 3D picture of propanone, the simplest ketone you can possibly make. And this one is 2-hydroxypropene, an alkanol. It has an alcohol group next to a carbon-carbon double bond. These molecules are tautomers of each other, which means that in solution, they can transform into each other. How does that work? Let's take propanone as the starting point. We are interested in three things. The carbon-oxygen double bond, its carbon-carbon single bond, and this hydrogen atom, all labeled here. Suppose that hydrogen detaches itself from the carbon and ends up bonding to the oxygen instead. It's a bit of a jump, but the little atom can do it. What happens to the covalent bonds? Well, a single bond will become a double bond, and the double bond becomes a single bond. When the hydrogen moves, it's basically just a proton, so it carries a positive charge with it. Negatively charged electrons in those bonds have to move around to compensate. The result is this molecule here, which is none other than our friend 2-hydroxypropene. Just by moving one hydrogen, we converted the ketone into the alkanol without any trouble. Unfortunately, if you have a solution of propanone, then it won't be pure. There will always be some of the tautomer in there some 2-hydroxypropene. How much exactly? It turns out that tautomers are hardly ever found in equal concentrations. In this case, the propanone is more stable than 2-hydroxypropene under normal conditions. Propanone is not very reactive, as I said before. But 2-hydroxypropene has a double bond and a hydroxyl group. It will react with things like bromine water, potassium dichromate, and people's livers. So it's not as stable. The solution contains a dynamic equilibrium like this, because tautomerism is dynamic. Our ketone and alkanol switch between tautomeric forms at a certain rate. At any point in time, there is more of the ketone present than the alkanol due to its stability. So this equilibrium is shifted towards the ketone side. And there is our introduction to the wonderful study of tautomerism. The type known as keto-enol tautomerism is the best understood example but you can find plenty more in your textbooks and on YouTube. I have left out all the details of the underlying mechanism, but if requested I will cover these in a future video. A little disclaimer, I am not an expert in chemistry, I am simply an enthusiast trying to help out fellow budding scientists. That being said, any feedback you have would be immensely appreciated. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section below. That's all for now. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your studies.